So the lithium batteries in my seven-year-old Hymer Active uh, are getting old, not much capacity left. And so I wanted to upgrade, I was trying to pick a battery that had a good long warranty, truly offered a lot of reliability, and I wanted something in the 300 amp hour range since I'm installing two. That's enough that I can get them charged fully without waiting too long, wasting a whole bunch, but uh, uh, plenty enough that I can boondock for a lot of days and run the air conditioner and the microwave when I need to. So looking like a good choice for a lot of reasons is this Epic battery model 12300A-H, the H saying that it has a heater inside, which I need for my boondocking up, you know, when you're skiing or up in, up in the great north. Uh, my reason for picking the battery, a lot of people in our group are using this battery and happy with it. Probably most important is that Nick over in Beavertown, Pennsylvania, uh, who runs Northeast RV, and Gordon White, who runs uh, Van Works up in Livermore in uh, California. These are both people I know and respect their opinions, and they're uh, outfitting my same van with these batteries. And so if, they can, if they're doing it and are happy, then I'm pretty good with that. That's, they have a lot of customers, and they wouldn't do something that'd be shoddy. So, but I need to check it out now. If it's going to be my van and I'm going to help people who've had the installations from someone else, I'm not doing installations. I'm, of course, not making money and not in business. I'm just doing my own van and helping people when needed. So what's this battery really about? Well, as an avionics engineer with uh, both electrical and software trainings, um, I want to see where that warranty really is going to come from. Uh, is there really truly reliability built into this thing? So my first look is a mechanical look, an electrical look of the basic outlay of the outline of the thing. So here's the battery case and I've gutted it. I've removed insulating pieces and some stuff. Very nice quality, by the way. Uh, no chafing and stuff gonna happen inside this box. So that's a sign of good warranty. So if I take the case away, here I have a caseless battery it's oriented the same way as this one over is over here is. And so if I now take the lid, it's a plastic lid. It's permanently glued into the box. Took some effort to get it out. You don't want to do that unless you too want to avoid your warranty. Clearly, they're not going to warranty this one. Although it works just fine and I plan on using it in the van. It was my guinea pig. Uh, the first thing I find here that's important is something I needed was where is the Bluetooth radio? And so it's here. And so since I'm putting this in a metal case, I need to have an RF opening, a window here to have that RF come out. And so what I'm finding then is whatever case I put on this thing, I need to have an area here, a slot opened up to let the RF out. So, okay, that was one important thing. Uh, I then pull back, hopefully not the short things out, pull off this bit of case material on the top, throw that aside, and you see here are the four cells. They're all tied together tightly. On the top, there is a aluminum strap between every one of them. The aluminum is very wide, the aluminum is very thick. So I like the choice of aluminum uh, because it's light and it's thick enough that we're not gonna see any voltage drop across that but they're keeping the weight down and frankly, keeping the cost down too. I'm all for not paying a fortune for this battery. Um, they've welded the, the straps onto here. So it's a permanent connection. That's nice. One of the reasons you might not like aluminum is because uh, it's not always easy to connect to. I notice here when they hooked up the sense wires for the temperature, uh, for the voltage on the cells, they use a very nice uh, bonding technique to bring those wires out. Uh, so that's that's good quality. Um, over here, we have the positive pole. So cell number four is here. Here's the positive pole. I like the fact that they ran... I like a lot of things here, by the way. I'm really thinking this battery's cool. Uh, they ran, instead of one heavy cable, three cables. That keeps the profile down, and so the, the battery size is minimized. That's nice. Also, that distributes the heat that these cables might see uh, across three. 
excellent. Gonna make that uh, a good choice. Uh, you'll see some things in here I've added because I'm instrumenting the battery to make measurements of things. We'll talk about that sometime in the future when we do electricity. Um, so I see the sensor for measuring the voltage of each cell. I find one thermal sensor over here, another thermal sensor here, and another one is on the BMS. So in the software, through the Bluetooth interface, I see three sensors. Here they are. Uh, they appear to be reading accurately. I messed with them. They are working well. Um, there are heaters. So heater jack, heater jack. Um, and then there is the, let's see, that's thermal, thermal, and the sense wires. Yeah, we got that covered. So then what else do we see? So we see the negative pole of the battery is coming around and coming into the MOSFETs. And then the MOSFET comes out and goes to the negative pole of the battery. Again, using the three, three cable arrangement. Nice. Also by doing that, you notice that they've, there's a big heat sink both on this side and the other side that this is all sandwiched in. By having the three cables and three cables, they've also spread the heat out across the large area. So I don't have a single connection with all this amperage coming to one connection. So again, like I'm distributing the heat in the cable, I'm impressed with the fact that they're distributing the heat, keeping hot spots down because of course heat is the devil when it comes to reliability. Um, what else do we see? So back to mechanical, I see the, this is the side that has no label. So here we are, no label on the back side. This is pure battery over here. There's nothing electronics on this side. So I'm comfortable that although the instructions say always have the thing vertical the way it's facing now, it could clearly lay down on this side and there's nothing going to be damaged there at all. And equally so, I can mount it laying down on this side. Again, all battery, everything else is away from the edges. The weight's gonna sit right on that. For sure, we never wanna put the thing on with its lid facing down. That's plastic, electronics, connections, uh, little weight things that, you know, little blocks that are holding the thing in place, but surely no place for there to be any weight upside down on this thing. So that's good. I'm going to just poke around here. Do I see anything else of, for the mechanical today? I don't know. Looking pretty good. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, about efficiency and temperature rises, stuff like that. But for right now, totally impressed. The first step in a reliable box is to put it together tight. The electronics comes second. Thanks a lot.